Hello and welcome. Today I'm going to show you how to install Ubuntu Server version 10.04 in VMware Workstation version 7. Um, this will allow you to run the Ubuntu Server uh, product uh, on your desktop, uh, Windows, Windows 7, uh, Windows XP, Windows Vista. Uh, if you've done this before, um, uh, it's very similar to uh, previous versions, but there are a few new, few new features and options uh, and a couple of uh, gotchas that we'll point out as we go along. First thing you need to do is download the Ubuntu Server CD image. It's called an ISO file. Uh, you do that by going to the download page. I'm going to ask that you expand this alternative download option. Uh, I'd like you to choose the 32-bit version. Uh, even if you have a 64-bit uh, desktop, the 64-bit uh, server option um, actually takes advantage of some uh, hardware features that are usually found only on servers, so I think the 32-bit version is the one you need. Uh, you need to select a location. Um, I'm United States. Um, pick your location if you're someplace else. Uh, click Begin Download. It's a very large file. It's um, 700 megabytes or so, almost a gigabyte. So it will take at least several minutes, even on a very fast connection. Uh, on slower connections, it could take an hour or longer. Uh, so get that downloaded, save it off on your desktop at a place you can find it again. Uh, you also need to uh, download and install the uh, Workstation product if you don't already have it. This is not free software, uh, but you can download a free trial. Uh, there are some free alternatives. Um, the installation is slightly different, but um, um, similar uh, Sun Virtual Box, for example, is a completely free product that will do pretty much the same thing. Uh, VMware Workstation is a, is a powerful commercial product, uh, so if you decide that you need the, the flexibility and the power of this product, then um, uh, it's the one for you. Otherwise, you can take a look at some of the open source alternatives. Uh, so download that, get it installed, uh, and then you should be ready to go. Now, when you run um, uh, VMware Workstation, um, of course, the first time you run it, you won't have anything in here. Uh, what you want is this Home tab, um, New Virtual Machine. Um, I'm going to suggest that typical is fine. Um, for what we're doing, you probably don't need uh, an advanced installation, but uh, you can take a look at that if you want to see what's in there. Um, if you select... Um, what you've selected in previous products, which is an installer disk image file, uh, which is what we just downloaded, uh, it's going to use a, what they call an easy install process, which basically automates the whole installation process. And I know that's supposed to make it easy for you. Um, but it, it may make a couple of choices that you don't like or that aren't right for you. And this is actually a pretty easy thing to install yourself. So I'm going to suggest you not do this in easy install installation. Uh, instead, for now, check this bottom button. I will install the operating system later. Uh, and that will get us into manual install mode. And as you'll see, this is really pretty easy. Um, click Next. Um, you need to select uh, the guest operating system. It's going to be Linux. And if you drop down this box here, um, you have all these choices. Just pick uh, Ubuntu, of course. Uh, you need to give it a virtual machine name. Uh, I'm going to suggest Ubuntu 1004. If you want to call it something else, go ahead. That's fine. Um, note that what it's doing is it's creating a, a folder um, in your virtual machines uh, folder. So you need to pick a proper folder kind of a name. Uh, maximum disk size defaults to 20. You can leave it there. Um, that's the maximum disk size. If you know you need more, you need to give it now because you can't expand it later. Uh, but to begin with, it will only take up as much room as, as it needs, and it's going to start out around oh, two, two, two and a half gigabytes or something or other like that for, the, for a LAMP install, which we're going to run. And I'll explain that in a few minutes. Um, if you're, store, if you're running this on your hard drive, um, this will probably be checked as a default. This store virtual disk is a single file. If you're going to install it on a um, uh, flash drive, external um, hard drive, which is formatted FAT32, um, which is the default for most external devices, um, uh, you're going to need to um, uh, split the virtual disk into two gigabyte files. It will detect that if that's where you're installing it. Um, if you're installing it on your hard drive, um, you have the option of splitting it into two gigabyte files if you think you might ever need to copy it off uh, onto a flash drive or external hard drive. I'm going to leave this as a single file for right now. 
we need to select customize hardware because now we need to actually um, uh, attach that ISO file to the CD-ROM. Uh, look at a couple of other options while you're here. Um, uh, it defaults to 512 megabytes. That's actually a pretty good number for server. Um, as you can see over here, 256 is about the minimum. Uh, but you know, as long as you have enough uh, um, RAM in your in your computer, then you you might as well leave it at 512. Network adapter NAT that stands for Network Address Translation. That's where you're going to want to start. Um, this has to do with how you get an IP address and and what it is. Um, this will piggyback off the IP address that you already have on your on your uh, host machine. Um, there may be some. Um, advantages to picking bridge mode if you're doing some kinds of things but you can come back and change it later if you do and in the meantime NAT's the way to make sure you get this installed and working properly to begin with. What we're going to want to do now is come back to this CD um, uh, drive uh, and we're going to want to check use the ISO image file you need to browse to the uh, Ubuntu file that you downloaded. Uh, I've got it right here we're going to install uh, server uh, 10.04 so select that and uh, we're ready to go. Click OK and click Finish and then just go ahead and power it up and the installation routine will start. Now um, you're going to be working in a terminal window uh, and this terminal window uh, is text only uh, so there's no mouse, no graphics. It's purely text. Um, you arrow up and down, back and forth, you press the tab keys and so on to move around in here. The way you start working in this terminal window is to click your, cur your mouse cursor inside it. Now your mouse goes away, but we have access to this terminal window. Uh, to get your mouse back, press the control and alt keys uh, simultaneously and that brings your, um, cur your mouse cursor back uh, to your desktop. So, click in the window. Uh, select English. Um, defaults to install Ubuntu server. There's another option here to check the disk for defects. If, defects. if you run this, um, it will go examine that ISO file you downloaded to make sure there weren't any errors in the download. Um, it's probably okay, but if you have problems later, then that would be the first thing to check um, uh, if you have problems with installation. Um, so go, go ahead and click install Ubuntu server. the installer will fire up. You'll make several selections. Um, even though you already chose the language, I'm not sure why it asks it again, but you need to uh, uh, um, select the installation language. Uh, you need to uh, select your country of origin. Um, you probably don't need to have it detect the keyboard layout and it defaults to no. Uh, if you have a really strange keyboard, um, maybe you do, but probably not, so go no and then just pick it. Um, your keyboard, is, if you're listening to me, is probably USA, uh, probably USA, but if you know you have something else, then you know what to pick. It does a little bit of detecting. It configures the network. This part is where you get the IP address and this is where if you've selected NAT it almost always works. You need to give it a host name. This should be something simple. I'm just going to select um, the default Ubuntu and add uh, 1004. That's the version to it. Um, you can select something else, whatever, but, but keep this simple. This just shows up on your command line prompt and if you make it too complicated then um, it, it causes confusion. So pick some simple name there. Um, tab to continue and then press enter. It'll set up the clock. It's going to take a guess at where you are um, and it's usually right. Um, if it isn't you can tab to no. Um, press enter and then it will come up with a list of time zones you can pick from. Uh, if it is correct uh, just press enter. 